In a special competition organised for Nutrition and Hydration Week, these three student chefs were given the chance to show off their skills and prove that they're good enough to make it in a professional kitchen. They've been challenged to prepare a main course and a dessert for an individual in a care home or hospital with poor appetite, with a budget of just £5 to cover both courses. The three student chefs have just two hours to produce two fantastic dishes for the judges, before one of them is crowned as this year's Nutrition and Hydration Week Chef Event Champion. My name's Sonia Da Costa. I've been cooking since I was young. It was part of our family. We've all been taught to cook. I've always loved it. And then I thought, I've got five children. I'm a single parent with five children. And now they're getting a little bit older, they're all in full-time school, so I said, now it's my turn to follow my dream, and that's what I'm doing. My name is Maria, Maria Farahani, and I'm British, but originally from Persia. I graduated in my country as a geologist <laughs> and then I find out uh, this is not my job. I like cooking between the hard stone <laughs> and the soft wood. <laughs> yes, but uh, I'm looking for my passion and uh, follow that one and I'm so happy now. My name is Gaynor Picorni. Um, at New College Nottingham, um, studying for my PCD Level 3. I spent 20 years in working in accounts departments and once my daughter was at secondary school, I thought this is my time now to do what I want to do. So I started at Catering College. Hi and welcome to Nutrition and Hydration Week 2015 Chef's Event. Delighted to have you here in the kitchen. You are all professional students working towards your level 3 and you've been chosen to come today to present your two course meal, main and dessert to present, cook and serve within two hours. You'll be demonstrating your understanding to your client group and you'll be questioned by the judges through your preparation and when you present your dishes. One thing I would like you to remember is the nutritional content of an uneaten meal is zero, so please make sure that your dish looks, smells and tastes great. Good luck, get cooking. Thank you. Sonia enjoys blending strong flavours in her food and is hoping to wow the judges with pan-fried sea bass, marinated fennel and grapefruit salad and a saffron butter sauce. For her dessert, she's creating meal foy with white chocolate panna cotta and raspberries two ways. Well, when I read the brief um, and I found out, you know, it could be for hospitals, um, you know, it's got to be healthy. Some people have had surgery, so I had to look at a dish that it was easy to chew to, on the palate. Fish is good for you anyway. And then I thought a fresh salad to go with it would be nice. And then the, um, I thought about the fat content would be the butter sauce. And if you had to make that dish on a large scale, it would be easy enough to do that. Mariam's two dishes take inspiration from her Persian heritage. For her main course, she's cooking saffron, lemon, garlic and herb chicken, served with fragrant rice, shelled broad beans and a sour orange and tomato sauce. For dessert, she's making pistachio cake with pomegranate jelly and cream cheese infused with rose water and lemon. 
That dish is from uh, originally from my country and uh, is a Middle East uh, uh, decorating and the colorful is red, green, <laughs> every color. And I uh, cook uh, and then is Andreas helped me for just a little touch for European style, how to uh, serve that one. Gaina believes in simple food done well. For her main course, she'll be cooking braised pork collar with a cider and mustard sauce, pomana, carrots and spinach. She's following this with a light dessert of coconut panna cotta with fruit salad, rum syrup and a coconut twill. The main course is a, a, a pulled pork dish made from the collar of pork. And I chose that because it, it's, a, a, it's got nice marbling in it and so it would be a nice texture for someone to be able to eat easily. It's a piece of meat that would normally be braised very slowly, so um, Preston and I have had to get to grips with pressure cooking over the last couple of weeks, um, as it was the only way to get it cooked in time. But I think we finally mastered it now. It would be something that would be very easy to scale up. Obviously, you wouldn't use a pressure cooker. You'd have to braise it in the oven, so it would take a little bit longer. But once it's in the oven, you just leave it anyway. So it would be very easy to do on a large scale. In the lead up to today's event, the contestants have had the opportunity to work alongside leading healthcare chefs, Preston Walker and Andreas Vinkert. I know food is one of my passions. I know when I'm when I'm old in a, in a care home that I'm going to want to be eating good food. I think you know it should be everyone's right that they get good nutritious food. I, I visited Oak House um, several times. I've just been amazed at the quality of food that, that's been produced. It's very different from how the reputation has been in the past for, for care home food. It's just opened my eyes to the possibilities of a career in that industry. We wanted to highlight this year the importance of having students in the care sector and really highlight the importance of actually teaching chefs uh, proper cooking and cooking which is directed at the care sector. My background, I'm a chef by trade anyway, I'm like, I've experienced um, working in kitchens and working in restaurants for many years and um, I obviously understand the benefits of working in healthcare and one thing that really wanted to get across to the students was how much a viable career it is, how rewarding it is and how satisfying you can create a plate of food and you can be presented to someone that's perhaps not eaten anything for a couple of days. If you can get them to eat something, you know, it's really satisfying, you've done a great day's work. In a care home if you give somebody a really good, or in a care environment if you give somebody really good food, flavour some full of nutritions, they thank you very much, yeah? and you make their day better. You know, one thing that I try and get across to, to, to my chefs, I think it's important that they have interaction with the residents, that they know them on a personal basis, um, that they know their individual likes and dislikes, you know, who likes their crust cut off the sandwiches, you know, the little things, and it's the little things that make a difference. You get a lot more personal satisfaction from working in healthcare than you do in a, in a Michelin star restaurant. And also, for me now, I've got a young baby and being able to have a family a work balance, um, it, it's, it's great. I mean, we get regular weekends off. Um, we don't work past six o'clock in the evening, which is obviously unheard of for many chefs. So I think um, there's a lot of pros to working in healthcare. Judging today's contestants will be three of the leading names in the industry, each of whom are highly experienced chefs in their own right. Phil Rimmer's career has seen him work in some of the world's best restaurants, including nine years as head chef at luxury hotel Woolly Grange. Most recently, he spent 10 years as head development chef at Appetito, where his work on a number of consumer innovations have seen him win the Craft Guild of Chefs Development Chef of the Year Award and the Cost Sector Chef of the Year Award. Louise Wagstaff is a culinary entrepreneur and development chef who has extensive experience in working with specific medical needs, such as those who have difficulty swallowing. Having worked in a number of leading restaurants across the Midlands, Louise's reputation for hard work and skill in the kitchen has seen her take on roles with high-profile organisations, including Unilever and Premier Foods. Peter Tilly is a qualified chef who is highly experienced in both hospitality and food retail. 
He joined Barnet and Southgate College in 2008 as a chef lecturer and tutor and now heads up Hospitality House, a new training facility based in East Finchley. Peter has recently played a key role in developing a new qualification for healthcare chefs with the National Association of Care Catering and the Hospital Caterers Association. Contestants, you have had half an hour. You have an hour and a half to go before your dishes need to be presented. Throughout the process, the judges are looking for the contestants to demonstrate a number of skills, including an understanding of the client group, good presentation of their dishes, including colour, texture and visual appearance, an understanding of the nutritional content of their dishes, specifically around the use of different food groups, the ability to plan and the use of different techniques and processes, and excellent food safety knowledge and practice. When it gets to that final plate, what do you feel is more important, the presentation or the taste? For me, I think the food's got to look good. It's going to want it to draw the person in to eat it, but it's actually got to taste amazing. You're going to want to continue to eat it. So, flavour's paramount for me. Yeah, the flavour definitely is, but it's got to be appealing. It's got to look inviting to start with. So, so I think we're all agreed there that quite a bit of emphasis on the taste as well as how... Most of it on yeah. the taste. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's good. Looking Let's forward go. Forward to it. Yeah. Let's go and have a look. Okay, guys, um, you've had an hour. You're halfway through. You've got an hour left. Jane was telling me that her dish is really for a care home setting and I was really struck by the cut of meat that she's using. It's a collar of pork. Um, it's one of the forgotten cuts that you hear about and actually I think that will resonate really well with, with, a, with care home residents. Um, it's quite succulent so it's soft to eat, it's really quite unctuous and it will give her an amazing flavour. And also what she's doing with the cooking liquor is then going to fortify that a little bit with um, butter and cream, add more calories to it. A part of the brief we talked about a suppressed appetite, so nutrition's key. Um, so she's got that covered and that's really quite interesting. I was also quite struck with the fact that she's using um, a water bath to reheat her baby carrots, which is quite a new technique. So she's got lots of techniques going on. And also I can see, and, and she's assured me, that from a scaling up sort of point of view, it'd be quite easy to do numerous recipes rather than just two or three that she's doing today. I think she's doing really well. She, she, she's actually cooked the pork in a pressure cooker because time constraints doing a dish like that can be um, difficult. Um, cooking it under pressure is, is really good. And also what she's doing there, we're cooking it under pressure, it's not only reducing the time, it's also locking in all the flavour, so it's a good technique to use. I'm looking forward to seeing Sonia's two courses. She's got a pan-fried sea bass with a grapefruit and fennel salad. Interesting. Isn't potentially a dish that I would see normally in a hospital catering. I think sea bass is quite an expensive fish to be using. Um, and pan-fried um, doesn't scale that well, but if it's a small, smaller establishment, I think there can be pan-frying fish. She explained it's for private dining. She put a lot of thought into um, the dish. It's a nice light dish with some good flavours going on. Um, and, and she believes it's easy to scale because it is very simple um, to assemble, so I look forward to seeing the presentation of that. I'm really interested in her dessert because I think that sounds really good, the milk wheat with the panna cotta and raspberry jelly, because for me that is a, a dessert that sounds really appetising, packed full of calories, um, very appetising and will hopefully encourage people um, to eat and, and get better. So it'll be interesting to see and obviously you know she had a brief on the costings and she's hit those so we can just wait and see um, and look at the dish. I think the milk will be lovely. She's only got two hours though you know she's making cooked pastry, she's making a pan of cotta, she's making a gel so the pressure will be on actually to get a dessert out set and, um, and present it in the two hours.
I'm very excited about tasting this dish. Um, it's probably flavours there that in, sort of like in the, in the West here that we haven't fully discovered yet. It's, it's got quite an Iranian um, backdrop background to it, and we got, we got flavours such as Barbary. We got sort of like sour oranges in there. Really fascinating. She's marinated the chicken and I'm, I'm going to be intrigued to see how those flavours play in. I love her idea around the rice. She's thought in depth about how that might be served in the care home um, hospital setting. She's cooking the broad beans with the rice so that, you know, like textures, so that they're not too, too well for the So it's, I'm quite excited about tasting the dish actually. I think looking at the budget that she's got, she's going to be well within that. I mean, so she's certainly um, tick, tick the boxes there. Possibility within the sector might be sourcing some of these ingredients um, because I think she has certainly bought some of them from home, um, from an Iranian family. So that could possibly be an issue if she was to replicate this and it's going to be scaled up to 30 or 40 portions. That would be my only concern. You have 10 minutes, 10 minutes to plate up. Everyone, you've just got two minutes to go. Food needs to be up in two minutes' time. Just one minute left. First to present her two courses to the judges is Gaina, who's made braised pork collar with a cider and mustard sauce, pom anna, carrots and spinach. For her dessert, she's created coconut panna cotta with fruit salad, rum syrup and a coconut twill. What do you think about the pork? It's a little bit dry for me. Could have done with a few more. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think probably as well it went through the oven. I think it would it would have helped if it would be braised towards the end because it was in dry, yeah. but that's my own but I love the potato. You saw potato. me tasting, I was munching on that during it's the It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, really, really. Yeah. Yeah. Looks really good. It looks good, doesn't yeah. it? Size wise, yeah. bang on again. Yeah. I'll just chop it up for Beautiful coconut flavour coming through. Yeah. Don't get much of the rum. No, no. I can't get the rum. No. Um, Which is a shame. Yes, imagine, it is. Yeah, you can match with the, the rum with that mm. coconut. Get, get, get the beautiful coconut flavour coming through from the panna cotta and the biscuits. Um, and the fruit's beautiful and fresh, isn't it? The fruit's um, lovely. Yeah, nice and... Um, and especially after the mate. Yeah. It's really fresh. Mm. I think it's a good dish. Yeah. yeah. Very good. I thought it might actually be a bit too sweet, but knowing the elderly, the sensitive, you like a lot of sweet stuff. Mm. More sweet than we don't, we don't expect. Mm. Good. Mm. Next to the pass is Sonia, with her bold dishes of pan-fried sea bass in a saffron butter sauce and a marinated fennel and grapefruit salad, followed by meal foie with white chocolate panna cotta and raspberries two ways. Fish is cooked beautifully. Mm -hmm. 
rather than sea bass, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's very good. Some great flavours. Do you think it's too many? It's busy. Yeah. I like the grapefruit, the fennel and the sea bass. It jumped at me when I, mm. when I read it. Mm. Yeah. Finally, it's Mariam's turn to impress the judges with her saffron lemon garlic and herb chicken served with fragrant rice, shelled broad beans and a sour orange and tomato sauce. She's followed this with pistachio cake with pomegranate jelly and cream cheese infused with rose water and lemon. say it's a marmite dish, you'd love it or hate it. Mm. I like it. I, I like, like it. it. I like it. Three of us like it, but yeah. it would be it'd be quite brave, wouldn't it, to serve that to so it has to be 35, 40 people. people. No. I mean, it's, mm. it's, it's cooked beautifully. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the weakest part of the dish for me is the sauce, because it does taste um, Marmalade, the chicken's cooked beautifully. I like the spice and the herbs on yeah. there, and, and the rice is flavoured beautifully. Oh, yeah. Sauce not quite it's right. It's a shame with that sauce because it was divine when we tasted it early on, didn't okay. we? But the, okay. there's too much orange. Yeah, I don't think it's too much of it on there as well. Yeah, mm. it's so strong. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay, if I yeah, destroy and it's nice jelly. That's a great jelly. That's great jelly. There's rose water in the cake. <laughs> It's the first flavour I get, and then you get the pistachios come through. And it was garnished lovely, wasn't it? So I think, mm. you know, presentation, both dishes were great. Um, I think all three of them done really well. Yeah. Okay, shall we uh, tat up our scores shall and we? then uh, come yeah. back? Yeah. give you a little bit of feedback each. So Gainer, um, I thought your dishes were excellent. I really like the use of the um, collar of pork. I thought the cooking technique of cooking under pressure was really good. It's actually quite a difficult thing to master in such a short space of time. The flavour of it and the flavour of the sauce were excellent. And I like the fact you were considering uh, calorie content and fortifying the sauce as well because we had actually asked for a dish for a suppressed appetite, so I thought that was good. Uh, the potatoes were outstanding. We, we all love the potatoes. In fact, Peter said he could eat the whole tray. Mm. Um, I think and, then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then onto the panna cotta, again, really good dish. Complimented the, um, the pork dish as well because it's quite a light dish with the fruit. The coconut twill was really good. So a really good balanced meal. Excellent, well done. Thank you. Sonia, on to me. Um, some feedback on both your dishes. Really impressed all three of them, um, the three judges here on both of your dishes. Okay. Presentation, outstanding. Um, within the kitchen as well, we sort of like marked you on hygiene, on working practices, and again, you've nailed the brief on that. Um, your fish on the main course was cooked perfectly, and we liked the incorporation of the fennel and the orange. All three of us mentioned just one thing with regard to sauce, um, was the fact that we, did it need saffron? Mm -hmm. And we, we ourselves are sort of like questioning whether that possibly took away from the flavor of the fish. Mm -hmm. The dessert, outstanding. Absolutely stunning. Precise um, and very flavorsome. Yeah. Um, really top-notch dish, so well done. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mary, well done. <laughs> And you can relax now. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Giving yourself a tough time, you've done a great job. All three of you done brilliantly. Your two courses were lovely. I say restaurant standard. Presented beautifully. Yeah. Looked um, looked lovely and tasted great. Um, the chicken was cooked to perfection. Your rice was beautiful. That 
your secret uh, hat definitely worked. That was fabulous rice. Thank you. Very tasty sauce, very unique and something different that we've never tasted. So great for you to share your, your flavours and origins there. That was really, really good. Um, the dessert again looked lovely. There was quite a lot of cake. It was very good cake. The jelly was amazing. Pomegranate jelly was absolutely beautiful and presented and, um, and served lovely. You did an amazing job and well done. Well, thank you for your dishes and your time. We're going to deliberate now, discuss, and we'll invite you all back in in 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. The food from each contestant was fantastic. Um, I think all of them had pretty much nailed the brief. Um, there are a couple of standout things for me. I think the dish of the day for me was the uh, panna cotta from uh, Sonia. The textures, the flavours were outstanding. And also the potato dish on Gainer's plate was really good. I could have eaten the whole tray. I think today's been great, the standard's been good, and it's great to see um, the students in there really enjoying um, and stepping up and delivering the brief as was asked. Um, all the dishes were fabulous. I think for me, um, my favourite was the coconut panna cotta with the um, coconut twill, fresh fruit salad with it. Um, beautiful, really fresh, great portion size and presented beautifully. Really enjoyed it, immensely enjoyed it. Um, observing the apprentices in the kitchen, coming up with some great dishes. What strikes me at the moment, I can, I can see a winner and that's probably to do with the balance of flavours and the marriage of flavours, but it's going to be a very close run thing. Okay guys, um, thanks for everything today. I hope you've really enjoyed it. We've got a little something here uh, for you to take away. Thank so, you. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Thank you. Thanks very much. We were really actually blown away by the standard of food that was presented. It was outstanding. It's obvious that the work put in has been immense. Um, we hope you've got as much out of it as we've taken out of it today as well. Um, there can only be one winner. Okay? It was really close, quite difficult. Um, you all outshone and far surpassed what, what we'd ever think. So, but there is only one winner and it's game. great fun it's been really good it's been lovely to get together with everyone I think the standards been amazing um, I, I knew, knew it was gonna be a high standard anyway but I've been completely blown away by the flavors the, the combinations you know the visual appearance of food I think it's been been great um, they've all done really well it's just been a brilliant experience and thank you to everybody that's you know helped us and you know it's good thank you and well done to the other chefs well done <laughs> Actually, really, really good experience. I'm uh, so happy to challenge myself, <laughs> but I, I, uh, but really, really nervous, and uh, just really good experience to be honest. <laughs> uh, I'm still a little bit in shock, to be honest with you. Um, I, I didn't expect it, but I'm I'm very happy. And hats off to Preston for all the support and, and all the help and guidance he's given me. It's been a lot of pressure for all, for all the students really just to come into a kitchen that they don't know, using equipment that they're not used to using and of course being under the, the, the pressure of the judges, watching what they're doing and the, the time pressure in the kitchen. It's been, it's been hard for them but I think they've, you know, they've, they've all shone through, they've been brilliant. Good feedback. And the only part I'm really, really enjoy is <laughs> when it's good feedback from judges or uh, everybody here and saying, oh, lovely, lovely dish. I was really happy. And some people said, is your main course uh, to me is win. And I'm so, so happy. Thank you <laughs> for this opportunity. <laughs> you can create brilliant dishes. It doesn't have to be slop. You can, and I think that's good for people. I think that is. And, you know, if you're a patient and you're in a hospital, obviously you're not going to want to eat some pale, horrible-looking dish. You want 
things to give you, you know, that you think, wow, yeah, okay, I might try that. And yeah, I think it's good. I think it's good. The experience has been amazing. I've, I've learned so much from Preston. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping to still do some work at Oak House in the future. Uh, and, and I've loved the competition. Everyone has been amazing here, very supportive because there's been quite a lot of nerves amongst the contestants, but everyone's been lovely.